wa hiya al-ilmu wal-qudratu wal-hayatu wal-quwwatu wal-sam'u wal-basaru wal-iradatu wal-mashi'a So after he talked about the attributes of Allah not being him nor other than him he went on to say wahia and those attributes are and he doesn't mean these are all of the attributes of Allah al ilmu knowledge is attribute by which he knows what is known wal qudra power is attribute uh, by which he brings things from non-existence into existence wal haya and life is attribute by which he is living wal quwa quwa means power al quwa and al qudra are the same two names for the same attribute was sam'u and hearing by his attribute by which he hears what is heard wal basaru and sight his attribute by which he sees what is seen wal iradatu wal mashia and irada and mashia both of which mean will his attribute by which he specifies the possibilities and makes them one way or another so irada and mashia they are the same they have the same meaning like quwwah and qudra and other attributes of allah have more than one name also like basar sight you can call it ar-ru'ya sight and there are others then he goes on and he says wal fi'lu and doing or acting or action which means creating the fi'l the doing of god is his creating what takhliq and creating so fi'l and takhliq they both refer to the same attribute al fi'l and at takhliq and this attribute has other names we're going to mention some more as we go inshallah what tarziq and providing or sustaining which is making the sustenance reach the slaves and this attribute has another name which is raz with the fatha on the ra raz and that which allah makes reach the slaves has a kathra on the ra riz riz provision or sustenance وَهُوَ مُتَكَلِّمٌ بِكَلَامٍ هُوَ صِفَةٌ لَهُ أَزَلِيَّةٌ And he, Allah, is a speaker, mutakallim. So this is an adjective, it's not a verb. Someone might translate that as, and he, he speaks bikalam, by a speech. Uh, some yeah we talked about this before some of our brothers and sisters they do not prefer to translate the adjective in arabic into an english adjective they would prefer to translate that just into the verb but really if you do that you will miss a big point we need to take care of those adjectives 
because that's part of uh, the issue with the Mu'tazila. They confirmed those adjectives, but they denied the attributes. So he is a speaker, bi kalam, by speech, by a speech, huwa sifatun lahu azaliyah. That speech is an attribute of his eternal, yani without beginning. Laysa min jinsi al-hurufi wal aswat. It's not of the type of letters and sounds. Rather, it's a speech that's not letters or sounds. And it's not an utterance. And it's not a pronunciation. And Allah is not attributed with a voice. وَهُوَ صِفَةٌ مُنَافِيَةٌ لِلسُّكُوتِ And it is an attribute that negates sukut, speechlessness. Sukut, though, originally means silence. So, not speaking. Wal afa is defect. So this attribute clears Allah from speechlessness, which is uh, being mute or dumb, and it clears Allah from afa, defect. Yani, but not it. Not only does it clear Allah from a defect. It is a confirmed existing attribute. What is understood from this meaning is something more than what's understood by the self. Meaning, if we say self, self of God, we understand something. If we say speech of God, then we understand something beyond the mere self. Something confirmed beyond the mere self. Beyond doesn't mean outside of here. Beyond means not just a mere self. When you say speech of God, you, you understand not just a mere self. You understand something more than that. Wallahu ta'ala mutakallimun biha. And Allah, exalted is he, is a speaker by it. By biha, by it means by this attribute. That's feminine, biha. So, does it go back to the word kalam? No, it goes back to the word sifa. It needs to go back to something feminine. The attribute. Kalam, the word kalam is masculine. So, if he said, Wallahu ta'ala mutakallimun bihi, then it would go back to the word kalam by the speech. Which he said, he said it here. وَهُوَ مُتَكَلِّمٌ بِكَلَامٌ بِكَلَامٌ Then he said, وَهُوَ مُتَكَلِّمٌ بِهَا بِصِفَةٌ By an attribute, by this attribute. آمِرٌ نَاهٍ مُخْبِرٌ آمِرٌ نَاهٍ مُخْبِرٌ He is a commander. That's an adjective, not a verb. A forbidder and an informer. And there are other adjectives attributed to Allah Ta'ala that have the meaning of speech.
wal qur'anu kalamullahi ta'ala ghayru makhluq and the quran is the speech of allah exalted is he uncreated or not created so then if this if this quran is the speech of allah and the speech of Allah is غَيْرُ مخلوق, Not created. That means then the Qur'an is غَيْرُ مخلوق, Is not created. So if the Qur'an is not created, it means we're not talking about the book. We're not talking about the revelation unto the Prophet ﷺ. Because the book is certainly created. The pages are created. The ink is created, etc. So, then we're talking now about something that's not created. And it's called Al-Quran. And he told us, what is that uncreated Qur'an? It's Kalamullah, the speech of Allah. So that means that this attribute of Allah, Kalamullah, has another name, which is Al-Qur'an. So there we have another attribute that has another name. You can call it Kalam, Al-Kalam, speech, and you can call it Al-Qur'an. Then, Al-Qur'an in this context means Al-Qawl, the saying. Al-Qur'an here then means the saying. Approximately, Yani. Wahua, and it, Hua here refers back to the word Qur'an. Wahua, and it, that Qur'an, is maktubun fi masahifina, written in our scriptures. That means, written in our scriptures is a script that refers to an uncreated speech called Al-Qur'an. That's simple terms. Last week we went into heavy terms. Let's keep it simple. Mahfuzun fi kulubina. And it is memorized in our hearts. That means in our hearts there is something created that we envision. And that refers to something uncreated which is the speech of God that's not Arabic. Maquru'un bi al-sinatina It is recited by our tongues. So that means from our tongues come created expressions that refer to something that's not created. Masmu'un bi adhanina and it is heard by our ears that means we hear a created recitation that refers to something that's not created and that reference that's not created that uncreated uh, referred thing rather that uncreated thing that's referred to is غَيْرُ حَالٍ فِيهَا not dwelling in any of those matters we just talked about. It's not dwelling in pages or in hearts or uh, coming from tongues, etc. It's uncreated. It has no beginning and has no end, but it has a reference, something that refers to it. And you already know, just like the word Allah, 
it is created, but it refers to who's not created. So we say, Allah is not created like that. Like we say, Allah is not created. And we're not talking about the word. We say Al-Qur'an is the speech of Allah and it's not created. But there's a difference here, which is that the word Qur'an has a double meaning. Sometimes it refers to something created and sometimes it refers to something that's not created. In the old days, they knew that Al-Qur'an meant something not created. And that that's the fundamental meaning, the primary religious meaning. That's the primary religious meaning. They knew that back in the day. And some people didn't know that. And so there were many arguments about this issue now maybe it's the other way many people don't know that and they think quran means something created primarily which is the revelation if you say al-quran perhaps for many or most people what they think of is something created that's the primary meaning to them but religiously it's not the primary meaning so take that case it's a precious case. Religiously, the primary meaning of Al-Qur'an is the attribute of Allah that's not created. And then it has a secondary meaning, which is the revelation that refers to that uncreated speech. And anytime we use the word Qur'an in a context of something created, then it refers to the revelation. And whenever we use the word Quran in a context of something not created, then it refers to the attribute, which is the primary meaning. Then the author says, Rahimahullah, what takwinu sifatun lillahi ta'ala azaliyah. And takwin, creating or giving being, is an attribute of Allah. Exalted is He, eternal. Yani, an eternal attribute. So taqween, as you can see, comes from these letters, kaf, wow, noon, which is the word kaun, kaun, kaf, wow, noon, kaun, which means being. Kaun means being, existing. So, you say, Kana yakunu kaunan. Kana, he was. Yakunu, he is. Kaunan, being, existing. He was being, or he is being, or existing. Now, in English here, the words change. So you say, you say, was, that means existed. And you say, is, that means existing. You say, am, that means existing. So the letters don't stay consistent in English here, in this meaning of being. That's what they call the verb to be. The verb to be. In English, that's is, was, am, etc. So here in Arabic, you have these three letters: kaf, wow, noon. Kana, 
Yakunu Kaunan. Now, that's what some people call the first form. And what some people call, what, the second form or the third form. Now, I don't even remember. But if you put a Shadda on the middle letter, you say Kawana. Kawana. Now you made it a transitive verb. Transitive. Kawana. That means to make be. To give being. And so, the verb kawana comes from this word here, tekween. That's the mustar, the origin, or the source of the verb. Tekween, kawana. So, tekween, in a very literal sense, means giving being as a noun, not as a verb. In simple words, means creating. But if we want to try to stick with the verb to be in our translation, which is what I'm going to try to do, as long as it's not difficult, then that's what I'll do. So what tekween and giving being, that's an attribute of Allah Ta'ala, sifatun, azali, sifatun lillahi Ta'ala azaliyah. It is an attribute of Allah Exalted is he, eternal. Wahua takwinuhu lil alam wali kulli juz in min ajza ihi li wakuti wujudi. And it is his giving being to the world. Takwinuhu lil alam. It is his giving being to the world. And to every piece of its pieces, or to every component among its components, giving being to every component of the world's components. Liwakti wujudihi at the time of its existence, making it be at the time that it should be, in accordance with his eternal management and destiny. That's simple enough. <laughs> It, this attribute of taqween, giving being, is not what was made to be, according to us. وَهُوَ غَيْرُ الْمُكَوَّنِ عِنْدَنَا And it is not what was made to be. The giving being is not what was made to be, according to us. Uh... So is it according to someone else? Who's us, by the way? That's the Hanafis and the Maturidis. Indana. The Hanafi masters and the Maturidi sires of creed. They said, Taqween is the eternal, everlasting attribute of Allah. Did someone else say something Contrary? Yes. According to the Ash'aris, Taqween is not the eternal attribute of Allah. According to the Ash'aris, except the old ones, the old Ash'aris agreed with what we're saying now. And some of the later ones also agree with this like our Sheikh, and Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, he agrees with this. But, most of the later Esha'aris do not agree with this. They say that the Taqween is the Mukawan. Uh, 
Now, I want to try to explain this for you because I want this to be clear. But I'll try to keep it simple, inshallah ta'ala. So, this taqween, what is the case of this taqween here? So, you know the Maturidis, they said taqween is an eternal, everlasting attribute of Allah. The Ash'aris said, no, it's not. They said, rather, Allah has an attribute called Qudra, power. They said, Allah has an attribute called power, Qudra, by which things come into existence. He brings them from non-existence into existence by his power. So, this which comes into existence by his power, that's the taqween. Al-Ash'ari said, what comes into existence by the power of Allah, what is the trace of his power, the trace of the power of Allah, that's the taqween. The taqween is the mukawan. The taqween is what was made to be. Uh, so, okay, that's their sayings. That's their two positions. If we just say them, as they are, that's what it is. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah who enabled us to know this case properly. Now, let's go a little bit further. Yani, I mean to say, this case has, Yani, it's not something you can start with someone. If you want to explain this issue, the difference, I mean, the difference between these two schools cannot start with someone in this this is let's say not first grade this is second grade cut you call if anything what's first grade here's first grade if you can't get past first grade then understand first grade first grade is what according to the maturidis tekween is allah's giving being to things and that's his eternal attribute period According to the Ash'aris, Allah has an attribute called power by which he makes things come into existence. And the things that come into existence, those are the traces of his power. That's what he calls the taqween. The taqween is the trace of the power of Allah. The taqween is what was made to be. The taqween is the mukawan. All right, so let's try to understand then uh, what's the difference between these two. Why did they differ, that is? Why did they differ about this? Because according to Al-Ash'ari. If the taqween, if the taqween is eternal, if the taqween is eternal, according to Al-Ash'ari, then that would mean that the mukawan is eternal. What was made to be would be eternal. According to Al-Ash'ari, if the taqween is eternal, then what was made to be is also eternal. How is that? Because he's saying, because if you have, let's say, something that was struck, something that was hit then this thing that was hit this strike it's created uh, this uh, struck thing it's created this thing that was hit this struck thing it's created so that necessitates that the hit is also created 
Al-Ash'ari says, the hit then would also be created, wouldn't it? If the one who got hit is created, if the struck thing is created, then the strike is created, isn't it? He says, because if there was no struck thing, then there was no strike in the first place. If there wasn't something struck, then there was not a strike. So if the struck is created, then the strike would be created like that, he's saying, if something was done, then this done thing is created. So if the done thing is created, then the doing is created. Because if there was no done thing, then there wouldn't be any doing. So then the doing is the done thing. And the strike is the done thing. The strike is the done thing. It's created. And the struck is the done thing. It, it, the struck is created also. The strike is created and the struck is created and the doing is created and the done is created. He says, therefore, the tequeen is created. It's the mukawan. The tequeen is the is mukawan, is made to be. So that's what Al Ash'ari said. The Maturidi said, "No, Allah Taala, He's the doer. So He wouldn't be a doer if He didn't have a doing. So if the doer is eternal, the doing has to be eternal. It's not valid that the doing." That the doer would be eternal without having a doing. It's not valid that the eternal one has a created attribute. So the eternal doer must have an eternal doing. And it's the done thing that's created. Just because the done thing is created doesn't mean that the doing is created. So... That's what they said. That's second grade. Now, I think we're not going to go to third grade. Okay. So we won't go further than that. We don't have to go through the debate that goes back and forth between them. Now, just know, this is a saying, and that's a saying. The stronger saying according to our sheikh, is the saying of the Maturidis. Based on the evidence, which is what we're not talking about, the argument back and forth, the debate between these two parties here, if one knows that debate, it becomes clear who has a stronger argument. But what we say is, Uh, what we say is that neither group is misguided. Just one of these sayings is, has a stronger argument because the yani the simple point that makes the Maturidi argument stronger is that they're saying to the Ashari's. You're basically saying that Allah was a doer without a doing. So you're validating an adjective without the attribute that validates the adjective. The Maturidis are saying to the Ash'aris, you're saying that Allah was a khaliq creator without an attribute of khalq creating in eternity. So you're validating an adjective for someone who doesn't have the attribute. So that's a strong argument. Uh, and Al-Ash'ari's answer is, you are looking from a linguistic perspective, and what I'm doing is looking from a religious perspective. So he had an answer for what they said. And so he's not deemed a heretic or misguided. 
or an innovator or a kafir. But their argument, their point is a stronger point. So according to Al-Ash'ari, Allah is Al-Khaliq and the Khalq is created. According to the Maturidis, Allah is Al-Khaliq and the Khalq is eternal. And that's stronger. And the Makhluq, according to both groups, the Makhluq, the created thing, the creation is created, has a beginning, not eternal. Wal iradatu sifatun lillahi ta'ala azaliya ko imatun bidatihi ta'ala. And will is an attribute of Allah. Exalted is He, eternal. Confirmed for his self. Exalted is he. We spoke about the will already. He says, وَرُؤْيَةُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى جَائِزَةٌ فِي الْعَقْلِ وَاجِبَةٌ بِالنَّقْلِ And seeing Allah or Citing Allah, yani seeing him without being in a direction is possible in the intellect and necessary according to the documentary evidence. He means here, seeing Allah Ta'ala has two judgments. It depends on the perspective. Do you mean what's the mental judgment or do you mean what's the religious judgment? So as for the mental judgment, it is ja is seeing him as possible in the intellect. So if we don't consider any religious texts, then we would say seeing God could happen. But if we do consider the religious texts, then we say seeing God shall indubitably, inevitably happen. Because Allah says, <laughs> Faces on that day that are brilliant, shining, illuminated. <laughs> Seeing their Lord. Those faces are seeing their Lord. So then it's confirmed. And also Allah says. <laughs> they, those blasphemers on that day. Shall be. Prevented from seeing Allah. They shall be prevented from seeing him. So if they're prevented from seeing him, that must mean that he's seen. Because if everyone will not see him, then there's no point in specifically mentioning that those people won't see him. As for that mental judgment, though, that seeing him is possible mentally, why do we say so? Because we say that we didn't see anything for any reason other than and that it exists. And Allah exists, so then he could be seen. And if someone says, no, we saw them because they're bodies, we see things because they are bodies, then we can say, it's not true because we can see things that are not bodies, like motion, motion is not a body. And therefore, it can't be said that we see something because it's the attribute of a body, because we see bodies, and bodies are not attributes of bodies. So we didn't see something because it's a body, 
and we didn't see something because it's the attribute of a body, then why did we see it? We saw it because it exists. Yani, we have the power of sight, and it exists, and so we saw it. And if someone were to say, no, we see it because it's created, and Allah has not created, and so he cannot be seen, then we say, but being created simply means existing after non-existence. And if something doesn't exist, it can't be seen. So if it existed after non-existence, then we saw it because it exists. We didn't see it when it didn't exist. When it came into existence, it's created existence. We saw it. So we saw it because it exists. So the reason we saw it is not because it's created. We saw it because it exists. And Allah exists so he can be seen. Possibly. Only he won't be seen. Like other things are seen because he's not like other things. And that mental argument can go further. But I'll stop there. If you have any question, feel free to ask. I'll stop there with that argument, I mean. Kala wa kade wara dad dalilu ad dalilu sam'iyu bi ijabi ru'yati al mu'minin lillahi ta'ala fi dari al akhirah. There has come the heard evidence, that means the documentary evidence, about the inevitability of, see, of the believers seeing Allah Ta'ala in the abode of the afterlife, in paradise in particular. And I just told you some, so I don't have to repeat them now. فَيُرَى لَا فِي مَكَانٍ And so he will be seen without being in a place. وَلَا عَلَى جِهَةٍ مِّن مُقَابَلَةٍ Nor is he seen by being in a, an opposing direction. Nor is he seen by being in an opposing direction. Nor is he seen by the connection of rays, light rays. Nor is he seen by the confirmation of distance between the seer and Allah. Exalted is he. Wallahu ta'ala khaliqun li af'ali al-ibad. And Allah, exalted is he, is creator of the deeds of the slaves. Min al kufri wal iman, whether that were blasphemy or faith, should be a hamza here under that. Wal iman, wa taati wal isyan, or obedience or disobedience. وَهِيَ كُلُّهَا بِإِرَادَتِهِ وَمَشِيئَتِهِ And all of those things, the blasphemy, the belief, the obedience, and the disobedience, are all by his will. وَحُكْمِهِ And by his ruling. 
And his ruling could refer to his speech, which is his command for it to be. Indeed, his command when he willed for something is that he says, be, and it is. So according to a explanation and explanation hukmuhu amruhu according to one way of explaining this statement his hukum god's hukum his judgment his ruling is his amr his command and his amr his command amruhu kalamuhu is his speech so you can say hukmuhu amruhu wa amruhu kalamuhu his hukum, his ruling or verdict or judging, judging or judgment, is his command, and his command is his speech. Waqadiyatihi, and by his creating or his decree. Wataqudirihi, and his destining, which is his managing. And the slaves have voluntary actions. That's the belief of Ahlu Sunnah. They're not forced. They are rewarded for them. And they are punished for them. وَالْحَسَنُ مِنْهَا بِرِضَاءِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى The good of those voluntary deeds is by the acceptance of Allah. Exalted is He. وَالْقَبِيحُ مِنْهَا لَيْثَ بِرِضَائِهِ تَعَالَى And the ugly of those voluntary deeds is not by his acceptance. Exalted is he. So then, the conclusion or synopsis of that is that we say clearly, we declare and pronounce frankly that Allah does indeed create what he does not accept. Allah creates what he does not accept. That's the belief of Sunni Muslims. Why don't we stop there and we can start this section on istita'ah next time, inshallah. Do you have any question I can answer for you?